Namaskar my dear students. Today in the preclinical process section, we will be discussing the fabrication of special tray or the custom tray for the edentulous patients. This is one of the important preclinical prosthodontic exercise which we do in our preclinical work. It is also often asked in the VIVA during the preclinical prosthetic exam and the final year prostho exam also. We fabricate these custom trays for our complete denture patients in our clinics. So let's begin. First of all, what is a special tray? It is a custom made device. We are making this uh, trays prepared for a particular patient. That is why it is called as a special tray, which is used to carry, confine and control an impression material while making an impression. These special trays are fabricated on the primary cast. Okay, then we do the border molding and make the final impression of the patient. Next, we come to the requirements of the special trays. One of the important questions asked during the FIFA. First, it must be rigid, but it should not be bulky. Okay, second, it should be dimensionally stable. So that will decide the material that we are using. The method of the fabrication, it should be simple and easy. It should be easy to trim and polish because there should be no sharp points. We have to insert these special tray into the patient's mouth for doing the bottom molding. Last but very important, it should be compatible with the various impression material that we are, uh, make, that we are using for making the final impression. Next, what are the materials that are used for making the special tray? First is the shellac. Shellac is the shellac base plate which can be used to fabricate the tray. Heat cure resin. You know, it is difficult to fabricate with a heat cure resin because we have to perform the whole of the curing cycle. So it is less commonly used. Impression compound. Type 2 tray compound is used for making the tray. Visible light cure acrylic resins, the pattern resins, these can be used to fabricate the special tray. Autopolymerizing acrylic resin, the most common material which is used for fabricating the special trays. We also make the special trays with cold cure resins in our uh, clinics. Okay, now this is one of the most common viva question which is asked, the materials. So you can remember this by the word Shiva, S-H-I-V-A. Now next is the spacer design. A spacer wax is adapted on whole of the denture bearing area to make the space for the final impression material. Two types of spacer designs are there. One is the full spacer design. In this the spacer is adapted on whole of the denture bearing area except the posterior parietal seal area. Second is the partial spacer design. In this the spacer wax is adapted only on the relief areas of the alveolar ridge. Now coming to the indications of the spacer design, the full spacer is mainly used with a minimal pressure technique when material we are using are impression plaster or polyether. Second is the full spacer with additional relief. In this the additional relief packs is added on the relief areas along with the full spacer. This is mainly used when we are uh, planning to make the impression with selective pressure technique. The material that we are using are impression plaster or polyether. Third is the partial spacer. This is also used for the selective pressure technique when we are planning to make the final impression with zinc oxide eugenol impression paste. Okay, if you want to go to the through the details of the technique, I have attached the video. Next is the thickness of the spacer. How much thickness should be present? It actually depends on the impression material that we are planning for the final impression. So first for the zinc oxide eugenol impression paste, the spacer thickness is 0.5 millimeter or in some books it is also written that the zinc oxide eugenol impression paste does not need any spacer. Second is the alginate which needs around 3 millimeter of spacer. Plaster, it needs 1.5 millimeter of space and elastomers 0.5 to 1.5 millimeter of space depending on the viscosity. This is a very important table regarding uh, in relation to the multiple choice question. Stops. 
Stops are the projections of the special trays on the tissue surface made for the orientation of tray after removal of spacer. You know when we have made the special tray when after that we do the border molding for the final impression we remove the spacer. So at that time we need that the tray should be oriented in the patient's mouth. For this we need stops. Okay, the location of the stops for this uh, it should be at the canine eminence and the first molar region on both the sides. The dimension of the stop should be 4 mm into 4 mm. How these are created? The wax is removed from the spacer of the given dimension in the canine and the first molar region so that the acrylic it flows into the stops while making the custom tray. Functions of the stop. Very important viva question and also the multiple choice question. First, it, help, it helps in the orientation of the tray after removal of spacer. Second, it, is indica it indicates if the equal pressure is applied on the both sides. That is why when we make the final impression, we see that the stops are exposed on both the sides. Third, it provides equal space for the impression material. So all the four stops should be exposed in the final impression. Next is the outline of the special tree. This is very, very important. The extension of the special tree is very important for doing the border molding. For the maxillary cast, the flanges should be 2 mm short of the sulcus. The tree must extend 1 mm distal to the hamular notches and 2 mm distal to the fovea palatine or the vibrating line. Now next is the extension of the uh, special tray in the mandibular cast. The flanges should be 2 mm short of the sulcus all around as in the maxillary cast. Regarding the distrobuccal sulcus, two lines are drawn. Draw a line across the back of the retromolar pad at right angle to the ridge. Second, draw a line 1 mm lateral to the external oblique ridge. Now join the posterior end of this line to the lateral end of the first line which runs at an angle of 45 degree to the alveolar ridge. So this is the extension. Techniques used for the special tray fabrication with autopolymerizing acrylic resin. This is the most common material that we are using for making the special tray. Two techniques are there. First is the sprinkle on method and second is the finger adapted dough method. So the first method is the sprinkle on method. In this we need a powder dispenser and for the liquid dispensing we need a syringe or an eyedropper. Okay, so first we will do the block out of the undercuts. Then we will adapt the spacer according to the design that we have decided. Then the separating medium is uh, applied on the cast. Sift the powder polymer onto the cast and saturate it with the liquid monomer. Apply more powder and liquid until there is a uniform thickness of 2 mm. The cast should be tilted during sifting to prevent any unnecessary buildup of the resin in one region. For example, in the palatal region of the maxillary or the mucobuccal fold of the mandibular areas. Then we cure the tray under an inverted uh, plaster bowl to reduce porosity. Now there are some limitations or the problem areas for the sprinkle on method. The first is that there is difficulty in controlling the thickness of the tray. For that we have to hold the uh, cast tilted okay, so that the thickness is not uneven. And if severe undercuts are not blocked out the impression tray or the cast it can be broken during the separation. So the block out is very important. Third, it is a time consuming procedure slowly and steadily one part will set then we will go for the next part. More chances of porosity is there if less monomer is used and a second it should be covered with the bowl to minimize the porosity. The second method is the finger adapted dough method. In this the powder in the liquid they are dispensed in a porcelain cup and then they are mixed. Okay, then we will wait for the dough stage or after just the sticky stage we can start. The material is rolled to desired thickness and then it is adapted to the cast with a finger pressure. 
okay the finger pressure is constantly applied till the material starts setting we can remove the extra portion with a bp blade then the tray is immersed in water till it completely sets you know this method is quick and the trays are constructed by this method fit well they have acceptable dimensional stability also this method also has some limitations in the problem areas the first is that the tray material it may be over thinned by the finger pressure over the residual areas or it may remain too thick in the concave areas so the thickness is again questionable second the resin uh, past the dose stage suppose the dose stage has gone and then we start adapting with the finger adaptation then it will lead to failure of the fit so we have to start adapting the resin in the late stingy or the dose stage okay if the finger adaptation is discontinued soon then what will happen it will rebound and lift of the cast so continuous adaptation until the resin begins to set has to be there after fabrication of the uh, tray we just place the handles regarding the handles in the maxillary tray one handle has to be made and it is placed in the interior central incisor region the, the dimension of the handle should be that it should be 4 mm thick 8 mm long and 8 mm wide the inclination of the handle should be 11 to 15 degrees second for the mandibular tray or the lower tray the three handles are required one is the main handle which is placed in the interior region the two other are placed in the first molar region which are called as the finger rests you know these finger rests should be made along the center of the ridge okay the dimensions should be 4 mm thick 8 mm long and 8 mm wide of the handles the inclination of the lower handle is vertical you know these are very important points which are asked in the viva and also they come as multiple choice questions now at the end let us just summarize the procedure of fabrication of special tray first we will make the outline of the tray on the cast for both maxillary and the man mandibular second we will block any kind of severe undercuts with the relief wax and then we will adapt the spacer we will apply the separating medium on the cast and over the wax also then we will construct the tray by any of the technique that we have uh, chosen let it be the sprinkle on or the finger adapted technique then we will make the handles as we have just discussed then attach the handles to the tray in the appropriate position after setting remove the tray and trim the excess with a uh, burr then adjust and polish the rough areas pumice the borders of the tray to make the surface smooth and then we have to store this impression ke a tray on the cast itself until needed until our patient is there so that's all for this topic for fabrication of special trays uh, stay tuned we will be discussing the fabrication of occlusal rims also in the upcoming videos do not forget to share and like the video you can give your topics in the comment section wish you success my dear students today and always